Okay, so now we will show you how to use the new SKF Bearing Assist app. So first, of course, you need to download it from your app store. And when you have it on your home screen, you can start by tapping. Uh, so let's just go through here, the onboarding with some information. And the first thing happening, you will be prompted uh, to create an account. You can use the account, the app without the account, but I would encourage you to create an account because then you will be able to use the full functionality of the app. And also I would advise you to, to check the box for news and updates so that we can send you critical updates on new versions and features of the app. Okay, so just to save some time, uh, I will just go directly to uh, signing in here. Uh, with a test account so I can show you what it will look like first time you're signing in. So first you will end up here on the bearings page. So this page you would use to find on the spot information about the bearing. For example, you are not in the middle of a mounting event, but you are in a warehouse uh, trying to select the right bearing and would just to make sure that you select the right one. So the fastest way to find information about the bearing would be to use your camera. So if you press on this scan icon along the app to access your camera uh, and you can read that one later. So here we need a bearing box. So let's scan this one. And you will see here that you get information about this bearing. You have the designation, some descriptions, dimensions, you can access the mounting instructions and things to consider when you mount the bearing. Uh, so this was the first way to access product information. The second one is by manually typing the designation of the bearing. And you see the, the more you're typing, uh, it will narrow the search result for you to find what you're looking for. So Let's, for example, show this one. Again, you, you can see the product of information here. Uh, so let me also show you the third way. Uh, imagine you are a technician. You have just dismounted an old bearing from an electrical motor and the designation have worn off, so you, you can't really identify the bearing. Then you could use the filter function uh, to type the dimensions of the bearing uh, so here you can see that still we have a lot of bearings with these dimensions so you would need to narrow the search more so if this would have been a cylindrical roller bearing you would have three hits uh, in this case if it's an electrical motor it's probably a deep groove ball bearing and then you can click to to show the 32 possible bearings. So still a pretty long list, but let's say that you actually can read parts of the designation. So you could read uh, two sets and maybe C3. So if you enter uh, numbers or digits, letters here with a space between, it will actually show you all results matching designations with these suffixes inside. And then again, you can select and you find the product information. So this feature in the bearing section, I would say is used to find product information on spot. But if you are a technician who will mount a bearing, I would encourage you to use the journal flow. So going in here, and this is where you will need to be registered and also to be able to use this, you need to create a team. So it could be a, a maintenance team, it could be a department name, it could even be a company name, but just for if you want to share information or collaborate with your colleagues, it's a, a name that will explain to them like what is the organization or department this belongs to. Uh, so let's give this a name, SKF team one create and here you can also add the people that you want to share information or collaborate with uh, but you can also skip this for now 
And if you would like to add new people or more people to your team afterwards, you will find it on the profile tab. So here you see your teams and you can also be invited by other team members to their teams. So it could actually be a quite long list here, but then you could enter the team and invite members and also see which one have already accepted to be a part of the team. But let's go back here. So now we are in the mounting journal where you can keep track of your mountings. So let's start a new mounting by pressing the plus sign in the right corner. So here you will enter information to be able to track what you have done and where. So first we need to assign where will we mount the bearing. And as this is the first time we're using the app, you don't have any assets yet. So you need to create one. So maybe you already have a maintenance management system or some type of reference of your equipment in your factory or where you are working. So um, let's enter reference here. And you can also enter a description. So let's say this is a heat water pump. And then you press create. So now we have assigned where it will be and you can also add location. So let's say this is pump station two. Uh, maybe you want to add a work order reference. And you can also choose what date. So maybe you are adding this event afterwards. You can choose any date here. The next option you need to choose if whether this mounting will be for you only, or if you want to share it so that everyone in your team can view this information. So th this is what I would propose that you do because then you really get the benefits. But in this case, Let's stay with having this private. So next step, you will need to assign the products you will mount. So this works the same as in the bearing search function that you can scan the barcode of the bearing box and the bearing will be assigned here to the list. But you can also uh, enter designation. So let's take this bearing that we searched for before and add it to the list. And here again, you can enter the product and you will find the information, the mounting instruction, and now also the checklist has become dynamic so that you can use it to tick the, the steps that you need to go through when you mount the bearing. If you would like to access the mounting instructions, you press this section and the first thing you would need to assign how to mount the bearing. So let's say that we will mount the bearing on adapter sleeve using hydraulic mounting and the SKF drive up method. And we use standard setting. It's the first time we mount the bearing, normal clearance reduction. It's a steel shaft with no bore. So let's press show instructions. So here you see we come and we have the settings you have chosen, the calculations you will need for the drive up, and also you can enter the step-by-step -step instructions with illustrations showing how it should be done. So you have a prepare section, you have a mounting procedure section, and here you will also be able to find the, the recommendations for the tools you would need when you mount the bearings so that you can better plan your job. Uh, I think most technicians have been in a situation where you have come halfway the job and something is missing, have to go back to, to pick things up. And, and this is the intention that being a little bit better prepared, being able to plan the job. And like, lastly, you also have additional recommendations about uh, initial lubrication, etc. Uh, and if you would need to change settings, you just press edit and you can reconfigure how you would like to mount the bearing and press show instructions again. Uh, so that is how you find the mounting instruction. 
So now we have ticked the boxes in the checklist and we are going back to the journal flow. So here you can see now that for this pairing we have actually performed six of the six tasks for this pairing. We can also add other products and here by entering free text you can add any component by any make uh, that you would prefer to. So let's just show you how you would enter uh, SKF bearing house. And then assign it's a bearing house, pressing done. So then you will see it shows up in the list here. Uh, you can also add photos, either from your photo library or take a new photo. So as we don't have a machine here, let's take a, a bearing box. So then you can add photos here. Uh, so it's also an easy way to share photos like the mounting, dismounting. And you can easily share all photos this way with your colleagues. They will find uh, the information you added for a specific job in the app. Uh, and you can also add notes. done. So here you can record what was done both for yourself and for colleagues and for track record history for improvement activities etc. And then you press save. So now this one will end up in your list of mountings. So here is a easy way for you to find information for future use. Uh, if you open this again you can now share this one. So pressing the share button will start to generate a PDF document that you can send by email or you can share it through your sharing apps uh, as a PDF report. You can also go back and, and edit if needed. Uh, and you also see here that you will get the, the checklist included in this report together with photos, notes, uh, well, I think uh, that was what we planned to show today. So go look, find the app on your app store and try it out yourself.